Hello, everyone. We are back. So I hope you have enjoyed your networking time. I'm going to introduce you to Esther Amor. She is the IT specialist for open source software and IBM. And previously, she was professional experience. It led her to explain the advantage of collaborative software. So hello, Esther. We'll be talking to us about open source and big data. Far below Hado. Hey, sorry, I didn't pronounce it good. Hello, Esther. Hello. We cannot see. How are you? Good afternoon. No, thank you, everybody. Attendance. Hello, Esther. We cannot see you. Oh no. No. Okay. Maybe your camera. Yeah. Down. Okay. No, oh, you can. You can. Hello, Esther. How are you? Hi. Hi, good afternoon and thank you everybody for your attendance. So uh, this afternoon here in, in Europe, uh, let me start with just with a short game. Okay, so I go. We are using the talk, Esther. One, one little thing, if you want to ask some question to Esther, you can write it in the Q&A yeah. or you can raise your hand and then ask her after her talk. Okay, yeah. so ciao Esther and I'll let you talk. So, so, thank you. So, so let uh, let me start with a little short game uh, using the, the chat capabilities. If I say big data, what words uh, came up into your minds? Please uh, don't don't be shy. Yeah, storage, for example. Solid processing. Yeah. Great. Okay. Performance. Yeah. Hmm. Sustainability. Messy silos. I love it. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yes. So, hmm. Velocity. Yeah. So great. Uh, okay, so I, I've seen that uh, you have uh, some knowledge about the topic. That's great, and um, and please do not uh, <laughs> do not get me into troubles. Okay, so uh, let's. Okay. So uh, for for this presentation, um, I've. Uh, I've structured it in three parts. The first part is um, just trying to define um, what big data is, okay? Then uh, we will uh, see some popular use cases around big data. And in the third part, we will um, have just a quick overview about the open source tools uh, available in order to build and um, and use a big data environment, okay? So, data, why big, big data and why it is so resonating in the, the enterprise market? So, the, the point is that indeed, uh, data has been always important for business. And, and this is because uh, uh, business people like to make decision making based on data okay uh, not only on, oper on operational business side but information has always played a key role in in the business strategy indeed um, for those that have uh, some experience in the in uh, in data strategy okay uh, there is a uh, DIQA model, which is uh, this pyramid shown here, okay? That is, okay, uh, we have, uh, we start big data, we have using, uh, gathering data, okay? From facts, um, from multiple sources, then this data is used to build information, um, information um, as, define as data used along with some context in order to answer who, what, where, these kind of questions, right? And then this, with this information, you build knowledge. 
knowledge is applying the information that helps why questions. And on top of that is uh, what, uh, what is called wisdom or action depending on the, on the on the speaker, okay? That is, how do you use knowledge for particular goals? And that's the, the ultimate reason why companies like to, to use data, okay? So, uh, um, in the enterprise, uh, how is data used? But you can use to uncover new insights, identifying new business models, uh, turning chaos and complexity into opportunities. And uh, also um, improving business processes uh, through, through key KPIs, uh, for example, for customer satisfaction, which is uh, quite trendy right now. Um, and having the net promoter score or uh, identifying what is the social um, sentiment for your company. Also, uh, also a traditional driver for, for data is optimization and also um, to manage risk. Um, some of the most popular use cases have been fraud and predictive analysis, right? So, and okay, but so far we've uh, talked about the data, but uh, this, uh, this session is about big data. And this is because we are going to talk about tons of data, okay? So to be honest, uh, even now, there is no a formal definition for big data. So we can use, for example, the Wikipedia definition, um, where big data is defined as, big data is a term for data sets so large or complex that traditional data processing are inadequate, are unable to analyze them, okay? So here we can see that uh, in big data, there are two key points, data on one, on one side, but also analytics on top of this data, okay? One of the, uh, if uh, we <coughs> talk about the evolution of data, we've seen, we've seen that uh, we are in, the, in a datification era, era okay? Indeed, uh, for example, uh, every person in the world right now using social media and so on is creating 1.8 megabytes every minute of, it, of its life, okay? But to be honest, right now, like 80, 80, 85% of the data is not still visible for current IT systems nowadays, okay? So we've seen that on one hand, we are seeing an exposure, potential increase on data. We have the pros that the technology is evolving and more and more we are able to analyze them. But the challenge isn't there, okay? So in terms of uh, big data and, and business, okay, we can um, talk a little bit about the, the value. Why in a company? it is worth to use big data, okay? So in most organizations, what we've seen is that data is spread across a variety of environment. We have uh, um, internal applications, we have in applications in on-premises, applications in public clouds, in private clouds. We have uh, engagement with the customers and providers, we have social media, we have information distributed up across multiple silos, databases, etc. So, for example, uh, here, for example, there is a very good, uh, a very good sample that, uh, that uh, helps to match this, this 
this knowledge, this data model into a real, with a, with a real case. For example, uh, imagine that you have a lot of sensors in both, okay, to capture data about ocean currents, okay? So this would be data, just raw data. But you are using these bows, these sensors, in order to get some information, okay? Because, for example, what uh, if you were a company with uh, with some uh, energy maps here, then probably you would be uh, interested in, for example, what the current in every minute or what is the climate in this particular area okay and then once we have this information and we match this information with a lot of other sources like for example uh, weather information we could apply it into knowledge and then for example we could even explain that okay if we detect that there is a current direction over time, probably it will help you to predict it your tides or, or even storms, etc. Okay. And then the point is that, uh, okay, what is wisdom? Wisdom is, okay, what, why do I want to use this knowledge? Okay. And this can be, for example, imagine that I want to build a model that tracks pollution into the ozone. So we can sh we can show uh, we can use all this knowledge and apply it just to track the pollution, right? Okay, and also there is. Uh, along with big data and because big data is on one hand lots of data that must be processed and also um, artificial intelligence on the other hand it is uh, useful to to see it as a as a ladder modeling this as a ladder and processing step by step using um, a lot of uh, sorts of uh, different mechanisms in order to get that wisdom okay so when do we need big data okay uh, as you have said in chat big data traditionally is uh, defined as large data sets but what is uh, common uh, in, in big data is defined when you have a large volume of data where you need to process it in a in a speed needed to to get this wisdom for the for the business when you have a variety of types of uh, of data and, and data sources available and you have to merge them in order to to go from data to wisdom, and also, of course, talking about the veracity. Okay, veracity indeed was the last, the last V for big data, and was it to emphasize how much you can confide in the data stored in this big data environment. Because uh, as you probably have heard, garbage in is garbage out. If we don't have quality in the data we gather, and we do not uh, process it in the proper way, uh, in the proper way, then we cannot trust in the results of of the equations we want to answer using big data. Okay. Uh, in some uh, webs, there is still some question about, okay, 
if uh, we are going if if we are going beyond uh, this GB capacity, we um, go from data to big data. But this is not uh, just the the only volume is not the only concept in order to to define the system as a big data, right? The, the point is that, for, let me put an example. So uh, there are some popular platforms that are able to store, query, analyze data, and even provide insights. It's like, for example, have you used uh, Excel? But of course, Although Excel is able to, to build wisdom and knowledge from data and information, is not considered a big data. That's why uh, the importance of uh, defining big data with these four key concepts, volume, velocity, variety, and veracity. And the point is that the turning point for considering our system big data is the current technology. If as the technology is evolving and can process large volumes of data, probably you can go and survive with all that big data environment indeed. Okay. So, and now let let me talk about five popular cases across several industries about big data. So big data has been used uh, first, for example, for big data exploration, okay? Uh, in big data exploration, what it does is we use the current uh, available data to simulate new situations to get new answers. Uh, what we do is to search hidden relationships, understanding what's under the hood, okay, and discovering more information about the specific topics, okay. So uh, let me put this in uh, another example. For example, uh, an aerospace manufacturer, for example, increased the efficiency among its knowledge workers and said, for example, and I'm talking about uh, several years ago, 33 million each year by deploying big data exploration solution. What it did is uh, using big data, they were able to reduce maintenance delays. They avoided pos possible financial penalties for out of service equipment just using this use case the big data exploration, okay? And as a result of, of it, they could support uh, five post and service representatives. They were able to place more than 40 additional airplanes into service without adding more support staff because Big data exploration led this to know better the business. Okay. Another popular use case is uh, what is called the enhanced 360 view of the customer. When customer can be a real customer for our company, but also providers. Okay. Uh, in this uh, in this case, big data is used to aggregate data from a lot of sources for several sources and optimizing what is the, the, the equation, the goal we want to get by aggregating these different data sources, okay? For example, let's um, imagine that we have a product company that we have uh, the product information segregated in 30 different repositories. In this case, with a big data <clears throat> solution, we can offer a user interface for data exploration and discovery across all repositories from a single point of view. I'm providing 
also secure robots search search capabilities across for example uh, let's uh, imagine that we have sharepoint sites internet pages wikis blogs and also the devices okay deploying such a solution uh, it saves uh, hours and even years of uh, searching data into the different silos and provide a federated integrated system of knowledge for those for example for those employees which uh, leads into a huge uh, increase in into the productivity so another popular another use case for big data is security intelligence so the point is that uh, as you may be aware the current state of art demands protecting enterprise data in more sophisticated ways that means that analyzing the data to get uh, more sophisticated kinds of fraud model and monitor events in order to predict if someone is trying to 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 use some, some sort of uh, kind of bad things against us, okay? So for example, for uh, uh, yes, for a case, for example, let's see that uh, we want to, uh, to detect and classify potential threats in a, in a lab. Right. So the point is that we have a lab, and we have a lot of sensors, camera, my microphones, etc. So deploying a big data, what we can do is to gather all the information about timing when when lab staff should uh, be working, uh, people around the lab that is not supposed to, to be there, it is it. And this kind of uh, models of, uh, of threat uh, predictions can be built using a big data. In this, uh, for example, uh, as, uh, there was a, a sample where just analyzing several hundred megas of acoustic data, we, they were able to detect uh, intrusions, physical intrusions, okay? Another one quite uh, popular and I think one of the first uh, use cases for big data, it was used to, for operations analysis, okay? And he said when we talk operations, it's about business operations, is how to see the health of, of, of a company and its processes, okay? In this case, in this use case, uh, th this operational data are used to improve business results, okay? And let's see, if you are working for a telco, it's uh, improving the, the number of uh, customers that uh, do keep in, into my company. If he, if I work, for example, for um, for a car manufacturer, it will be improving the sales, right? This kind of operational data, okay? Um, and depending on, on your industry, on your company, the data sources can be anything, anything, okay? From uh, documents to Excel, sensors, or even GPS devices, right? So uh, going back uh, to the to a telco, for example, uh, there was a phone company that reduced the probability of a, of a customer, of a young customer leaving the company and improving customer satisfaction just 
put in place a big, a big data solution. The, the requirements were analyzing the marketing campaigns and through big data, they were able to target better the right customers and offering the right offers to those customers more prone to to leave you okay and also offering some sort of bonuses and special plans to your best customers and this was able using big data okay uh, the last use case is the data warehouse augmentation. So the point is that, what is a data warehouse? Data warehouse is a system used for reporting and data analysis, okay? And this is one of the core components of business intelligence, which is another uh, market uh, tightly aligned with big data, okay? So, the point is that using big data, these, those data warehouses uh, can, be, can, can be augmented through different kind of sources that uh, in, in previous data warehouse uh, definition were not able, okay? So, and now, let me have just um, a, a quick uh, overview about the about the tools. Okay, so uh, indeed, uh, this is a simplified way of uh, viewing a big data, which is okay. Let uh, let put uh, let define big data. Let classify it into four layers and several processes. Right. So. And uh, let's uh, start with data, okay? So we've talked about uh, the first thing with big data is getting data. Gathering the data that might be relevant for to, to build this wisdom, okay? So it can be from SQL data sources, like for example, Postgres, a non-SQL databases like, for example, Redis, Cassandra, Mongo, Graphs, DBs like Neo4g, etc. Okay. In this, uh, this is just some. Indeed, uh, data can be of any kind of type because we can we can include both internal, external data. That of several formats of documents, uh, ERIP information, CRM records, um, sensors, social media, etc. Okay. And then is the data sources can must be uh, integrated into the big data environment in order to process it. Okay. And um, for that, we can start uh, uh, defining the, the storage, okay? And depending on the framework that we are using, we can, uh, we can go as deep as just uh, talking about uh, the storage itself, either block, file system, or object storage, like for example, with solutions like uh, Ceph, okay, we can if we are using Hadoop as a as a core processing uh, model for for our big data environment, we can use uh, HDFS or we can use Hive as the data data warehouse built in etc. Okay, the point is that. And the challenge we have here is that with, with data integration is that in order to have, to avoid the challenges of lack of data or too much data, the point is that when we have a lack of data, 
sometimes we will be forced to acquire external sources for if needed. It's the case, for example, for, of Twitter. If uh, we are a company and we want to to get uh, the sentiment on what are the users uh, talking about uh, my services, we will need to go to Twitter and buy and buy information for that, right? Other times, internal internal data sources will be enough, and that's cool, and that's great. Also, too much data is also a challenge because, uh, as you mentioned, the uh, it's quite common to have silos, and it quickly becomes a data engineering to integrate it. For that, we can we have several tools like, for example, Kafka for to get uh, data streams or even Elasticsearch in order to integrate those silos and providing just a, a foundational data for our big data environment. Okay. Let's not forget the third and probably the worst challenge, which is big data, okay? Garbage in is garbage out. Indeed, uh, I don't know if you are aware, but 80% of the time of a data scientist is spent on data quality, okay? So data governance is key to ensure that data available is accessed just by the right users in the right the right period of time, and also compliant with the legal and country regulations. For example, if we uh, talk about compliance in GDPR, it's a great example that uh, even when you have data available, it does not automatically allow you permission to process it. So you can you need to, to have uh, to keep in mind these kind of things also when using data. We, you cannot do anything with the data you are able to access, right? You know that the, so when we talk about data governance, there is a lot of uh, process here, but also we have some um, tools like for example in the in the Apache, Apache Atlas, for example, is uh, uh, open data, uh, open metadata management. Okay, uh, what it does is it allows you to build a data catalog to uh, inventory your data assets, to classify them, and to put some rules about how to gov to govern the data on those catalogs, okay? And also we have Apache Ranger in terms of security, okay? Also managing big data. So for the two main uh, data processing frameworks in open source are Hadoop and Spark, okay? Uh, with with Hadoop, we have also other names for enterprise commercial open source built on Hadoop, like, uh, I don't know, IBM Big Insight, MapReduce, uh, sorry, Mapper, no, Mapper, uh, Cloudera works, which were um, recently, at least, I think it was two years ago that. Uh, it was acquired by Cloudera. So we can see that we have a, a full set of uh, different tools and distributions available for big data. Okay, so the difference uh, between Hadoop and Spark is that Hadoop, it, it was the first open source framework for big data. The goal when it uh, was born was to process big data loads in a distributed uh, way using the MapReduce algorithm, using community hardware. Before Hadoop, 
if a company uh, wanted to analyze a um, big amount of data, they had to to acquire um, very specialized uh, hardware and, and software just to process it. Okay, um, Spark was born later in 2009 to target specifically velocity. Uh, there was cases where uh, you need real-time processing and using the in-memory processing with the Spark, you were able to, to process the streaming data that was not able with Hadoop, which is mainly for batch processing, okay? And also, um, when we have data, uh, we have the processing engines, we cannot uh, forget other things, like, for example, manage the system. So here is, here we can, we can talk. Oh, I've just uh, added some, uh, some packages, like, for example, if we, you can use a page solar in order to uh, perform quick and complex uh, queries for, for the data stored in the big data environment, you can use also Elasticsearch, as I said before. But for example, we can use uh, Apache Zookeeper, which is used to provide a distributed configuration services, synchronization, the naming registry for, for, for the, just uh, for the system, for the big data system for Hadoop or Spark. You can use Nagios for monitoring, okay. And we can also talk about the different uh, Linux distributions available in order to build this uh, Hadoop solution on top of that, okay. Also, as the, uh, as the capabilities of technology has being great, we, we could uh, have uh, evolved from just applying uh, regressions and some traditional, traditional uh, analytics in order to process this, this data and get insight uh, and get uh, knowledge and, and which is done. And for that, uh, we can uh, talk about artificial intelligence. So right now, big data and artificial in intelligence are more and more popular because it allows you to process the data available in ways that were not even possible to imagine. In, in that, we can, we can talk about, for example, some the most uh, popular languages are R, Python, we can use, uh, we can also name Scala. And from, and depending on the type of data that being analyzed, we have TensorFlow, PyTorch, CTKitLearn, the ML library on top of uh, Spark, and so many others that are uh, getting popular right now in artificial intelligence. So this is just a, a, a point that is uh, every day changing and is worth uh, keeping an eye on it, right? And also for last, uh, if you remember on the first slide, the point is taking action from data. So in some ways, you need to use this data uh, and build your models, like for example, the, the churn the model for the telco or, or the information for sellers, you see? And you can, you need to build uh, an application for it. For that is, uh, in order, for example, so, in order to, to build the, the application, developers can create new applications using the Node.js, 
Spraying, Java, managing the code they build uh, using Git or GitLab. Uh, you can you can build the uh, graphs and dashboards using Kibana or Grafana. So there is a lot of uh, and a rich ecosystem of uh, open source tools that that can fit in to the big data. Right. And of, co of course, this is not just uh, an exhaustive list of uh, up, of open source that uh, can be used into and can fit into the uh, big data environment. It's just a, an introduction. Um, thank you very much uh, for your time. This is the things I wanted to to share with you. Thank you very much, Esther, for your presentation. It was really interesting.